Hello everyone and welcome to Don't Be Bored. Today I'm joined by the designer of Kelp, a brand new asymmetrical game for two players. So welcome Carl, please tell us a little bit about the game and why a shark versus an octopus. Hello Oliver, and firstly thank you for having me on the show. I've watched your stuff since I believe when you first started out on the Dice Tower as a contributor to Board Game Breakfast, so I'm really happy to be here and talk a little bit about Kelp. Well, um, to answer your first question, where did the idea for shark versus octopus come about? Well, it, it came about in 2020, I believe, when I watched My Octopus Teacher for the first time. It's a documentary on Netflix, and it's about a diver who goes and goes diving to visit this octopus in a kelp forest off the coast of South Africa. And he goes to visit it every day for a year, basically, or for its, for its life. And during that time, the octopus is being hunted by a pajama shark, which is the specific type of shark in, in kelp. And so it's being hunted, it kind of, you know, every, every few days, the shark will come back and try and, try and, uh, try and attack it. And one day, uh, this is a little bit of a spoiler for the documentary, so if you haven't watched it, well, anyway, you'll be all right. You can still watch and enjoy it. But there's this moment where the shark uh, has the octopus cornered, basically. It's in an exposed part of the kelp forest. And the octopus has got nowhere to hide and the shark is kind of circling it, going round and round. And the documentary captured this incredible behaviour where the octopus, as a, as a way of escaping, rolls itself up into a ball of shells. So it sticks the, the shells to its tentacles on its arms and kind of creates this ball of armour around itself using the shells and so the shark is like attacking it and it's biting at the shells and it can smell the octopus it's really confused because it knows the octopus is there but but kind of is you know it's just biting shells and then eventually the octopus lets go of the shells swims in the other direction and these shells just float to the ground while the shark is is eating them and the shark's left kind of dumbfounded and confused and I, and I saw that moment in the documentary and it was just so ludic so playful and and immediately reminded me of a kind of a game dynamic where a hunter and hunted kind of dynamic. And, um, and so that was the kind of starting point where I, I thought I could try and make this into a game. And so I, I set off and, and that's ultimately what it became. It became a game of cat and mouse or octopus and shark or shark and octopus, if you like. And uh, the octopus is represented by like a mahjong block in kelp kind of um, it's this little this is just a prototype but you can see it's this little um, like one-sided block a little bit stratego like and this will stand up on its end like this so the shark from the shark's perspective they just see the back like you would if you were looking at your opponent's pieces in stratego and the octopus player they see the front they see where they're hiding and this piece is mixed in with with other blocks with shells and with traps and various things like that and the octopus plays a kind of a deck building hand management game where they're playing cards to move these blocks around on the board and mix them up and try and survive and stay on the run by keeping keeping their octopus block hidden and away from the shark. And the shark, meanwhile, they're playing a dice building game, a dice pool building game. So they're rolling dice, mitigating the look and moving a shark mini around the board, uh, circling these pieces and rolling dice to reveal the pieces and move around faster and things like that, ultimately trying to find the octopus and attack them uh, and then beat them in this final mini game at the end with a, by playing a, there's a mini card game at the end that to, to kind of win that final confrontation. And so I tried to capture that moment and there's some other things in the, the documentary captures as well, behavior that the documentary captures, um, like the, the way if the octopus gets caught, what it does to escape, which is another piece of incredible behavior. But um, I'll, I'll let you watch the documentary and then maybe try kelp to see uh, at what points we've taken inspiration from that further. But there you go, that's where the idea came from. That sounds like a really cool documentary, so that will be definitely added to my Netflix watch list to get around to at some point. It gives that clear sort of asymmetry, and I believe that Android Netrunner is one of your favourite games, so has that influenced it, and what sort of other games have influenced Kelp? Yes, that's correct. Android Netrunner is one of my favourite games. It is, in fact, my favourite game at the moment, um, and has been for quite some time. It's just behind me on the shelf here, I believe. You can see it just there. 
And uh, yeah, I don't have a ton of it, to be honest. I, I don't play it competitively. I play it really just casually um, against, you know, friends. And we just play a few hands and I've always really enjoyed it. And for it, yes, it was a big inspiration on the game as well. Um, in it, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But as long as, also alongside some other games um, I, that I kind of got inspiration for some mechanisms for Shanghai in which is a, a really underrated game that if anybody doesn't know, I highly check it out. It looks, the artwork is not great, but the, the gameplay is fantastic. Um, and uh, Mr. Jack, um, Spirium, another game that kind of, I uh, got a, and some ideas from about placing, well, in my case, dice at the intersections between cards. In that game, it's placing, placing your workers between cards, but that kind of gave me an idea for placing dice between cards, uh, which happens in the on the shark side of the of kelp. But uh, Netrunner, yeah, it uh, that was definitely a big influence on me. Um, for anybody who doesn't know Android Netrunner, it's, a, it's another two player asymmetric game like kelp is. Um, and uh, in the game, one player is a corporation. It's set in the future, kind of like Blade Runner, and they're this kind of big corporation, evil corporation, if you like, and another player, the other player is a hacker, the runner, and the runner is trying to infiltrate the corpse systems, uh, break through their internet, you know, the security defenses, and uh, steal information for them, which are these agenda cards. And so the corp is putting up defenses, trying to keep that those agendas hidden and bluff as to where they're hiding their agendas and ultimately kind of advance them to win the game before too many are stolen, too much information stolen. And so in a very early version of Kelp, uh, the very first version of Kelp, I actually set out to try and make a, a deck builder, but in a sense that it was more like a hand builder. And there were four hands of cards laid out on the board. 16 cards, in fact, 17 cards, in fact, laid out on the board, face down, and one of them was the octopus. And the octopus player would flip cards over, trying to, um, and each card would have an effect, so as you flipped it over, you might be able to do something like move cards around or uh, improve each set of four cards and, and upgrade uh, certain cards and things like that, trying to keep the octopus hidden and uh, on the move. It had a lot of memory, that uh, version of the game, and so it didn't really work um, uh, very in the very kind of early version. And it wasn't until I, I jumped to the Mahjong block ideas, which uh, eliminated a lot of that memory element for the Octopus player, uh, that, I, that it really started to gel together. But for, those, for anybody that does know Netrunner, one of my, my favorite corp to play, my favorite faction to play, is as the corporation, so a kind of powerful corporation that's under pressure, um, but I like to play the faction Jinteki, which they are, uh, that faction uses a lot of traps. They have a lot of kind of, a lot of hidden information and they're trying to bait the runner into falling for these traps often and uh, being very sneaky as to where they place their agendas, um, you know, mixing them up amongst these, um, amongst these traps. Very much like a shell game, like the three coconuts in the street with a ball and I, I show you the ball and then mix up the coconuts. Well, that's, that idea is, is very much what you're doing in, in Kelp as the octopus player. You are with the Mahjong block, sometimes revealing yourself, sometimes coming out of hiding or being revealed and then disappearing again and, and mixing yourself up maybe with some traps and some dangers for the shark and kind of mixing those together. So yeah, it was a it was a, a big influence on me, and um, I, if anybody's never tried Netrunner, it's a good time to get in now. Um, there's a there's a new version of the game available, and I, I really recommend it. It's a good got a good on ramp at the moment to get new players in, and you can play casually like me and still get a lot of value out of it. It's interesting to hear about the game, the sort of design process, and when there weren't even those Mahjong tiles in the games, that was really cool. What would you say you learned from the design process that might help future designers? One of the biggest things I've learned whilst working on Kelp and my other designs has been to not, to, to rather to focus on the experience you want your player to have. Uh, maybe more so than thinking about theme or mechanism first thinking about how you want your players to feel. Do you want them to feel the thrill of danger? Do you want them to feel uh, the, the satisfaction of completing goals? Do you want them to feel um, like they can be cunning or, or that they'll be powerful or rich or whatever it might be? And then use that experience 
to then drive your design and to then think about, well, what's the mechanisms? What are the themes and settings that can best play into that? And, you know, very early on, although, I, although it was an idea for kelp for me to have um, an octopus and a shark, the, I really wanted to carry that emotional experience from, from Netrunner right? that, and the, those games that I like, very head-to-head uh, uh, -head two player games where one player's got a back against the wall kind of heart pounding, they're on me, they're on me kind of feeling and the other player is deceiving, is uh, not is, uh, deducing what's going on and being clever that way and, and pounding on their door and that was the kind of emotional experience that drove my my initial designs and then throughout my design process but also it also defined the questions that i would ask play testers and i would i would really try to dig into well what was the emotional arc of the game and uh, another thing that i've learned about about design is that in, in an ideal game you either want you want every turn to either increase the tension or release the tension and over the course of a game, you want that the, the increases of, of tension to get more and more and more. And that's your kind of game arc until the biggest release of tension comes on the final turn. And I think um, thinking about that, that idea and what is playing into that when you're constructing your game and, and you know, what can you shave off if it's not increasing tension or not releasing tension and how can you make a bigger payoff? Um, for me, the biggest example in kelp is um, uh, when the octopus gets caught, it's not the end of the game. The shark may reveal the octopus and attack them, but there is this thing called the final confrontation, and both players play uh, play cards. The octopus has three escape strategies. The shark has three uh, counters to those strategies, and each player plays a card simultaneously face down, and then they reveal them. If they're matching, the shark has found the octopus and or has blocked the octopus's escape and has, has caught, caught them and killed them. Or if they play different cards, then the octopus gets to escape. But they don't get to use that escape again. So that means the second time they get caught, it's a 50-50 chance that they will, will escape. And the third time they get caught, it's 100%. And that really ratchets up the tension um, throughout the game. And, and while each player's... Um, also trying to achieve their own goals. The octopus is trying to eat all of their food or just survive. And the shark is trying to find the octopus. Each one of those goals is also trapped on the board and they go towards a final destination. Uh, and that's the, 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 uh, the end of the game and the victory condition for one of those two sides. And so that's another way of, of, of me ratcheting up the tension, hopefully on each turn, and, it, and so that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until that final payoff when they flip those cards and one of the players has won and the other's lost. Um, another thing I, I would talk about as well when thinking about game, uh, the emotional experience of your players is um, there, is, uh, there was a blog post by Alexandre Garneau called The 14 Forms of Fun. And now he's a uh, he's more interested in video game design, but I think but that that does a lot of that applies to board games, and those kind of fourteen forms of fun have also given me a lot of guidance of like giving names to these what what players are looking for when they're playing games, and in kelp I really tried to focus on the thrill of danger and advancement and completion, and those are really uh, satisfying experiences for players and something I've tried to cultivate in the game. So I really recommend checking out that blog post if you can find it. It's the 14 forms of fun. It's great how passionately you talk about kelp. That really does come through sort of your enthusiasm for the game. But what would you say is your favorite part of the game? Well, I've played kelp a lot at this point. Uh, coming up on hundreds of times now um, and I still I still enjoy it every time it's something I think I designed the game for me if you know more than more than anybody else I've really tried to make a game that I love and I'm passionate about and I think that means I've got two two things that I really enjoy in the game the first is well obviously as it's asymmetric when I'm playing as the octopus like I said in Netrunner I really, really love that kind of back against the wall um, you know, my heart's pounding, but my, I've got to keep a poker face. And, and that's absolutely the case when I'm, when I'm playing as the octopus, it's the same. I love that feeling of, of feeling like the shark is on me all the time. And then I've got to be, you know, I can't make a wrong step, but 
uh, it's also exciting because I've, I can bluff and I can be cunning and I can mix traps up or or go the other way, you know, and, and, and deceive them. And I love that feeling, that mix of like, this is this is really tense, but I've also got some power there and, and I can use it. And that those big, aha, I got you. you. I wasn't there, I was there kind of moments. I really love it when I'm playing as the octopus. But um, I, actually some of my most memorable play tests have been when I've been playing as the shark, actually. I played it a lot with a, a really good friend of mine and uh, I would often play the shark uh, in, in the early days of testing the game. And we had this game where it was down to the final turn. He was going to win on, he was going to eat all of his food on the final turn, his, his last piece of food. I was down to my last die, you know, it was my, it was all or nothing. And he just shuffled and mixed up his blocks, kind of like, uh, kind of like the coconut mixing up kind of thing. But um, he'd done it in such a way that I, I suspected he was bluffing. And so final turn, I'm far away on the board, so I use all my powers that I've got remaining, you know, all my re-rolls, all my dice and all my special abilities to move and get next to this block that I think is where he's hiding. And I reveal it and it's the octopus. So we have this final confrontation and, and inside I'm just, you know, I'm so excited, like I'm, but I'm also like, am I gonna win this, am I gonna win this? We do the confrontation, it's the second confrontation, so I've got a 50-50 chance flip the cards and I've got him. I've read his mind, I played the one that he was gonna play and I, honestly, I probably was not uh, the best winner <laughs> I've ever been. I got up, I jumped up and I was like, yeah! And I ran around his living room, scared the cats, his cats, you know, they're like, what's going on here? This, who's this guy running around the living room? But, you know, we laughed about it and that, that moment was just, it was one that I'm never gonna forget while playing the game. And so there's that as well, you know, you've got the, I think, I hope that's the, the benefit of kelp is that there's two sides and there's different things to experience and to enjoy in different sides. And for me, like I said, it's it's the game I want to play a lot. So, um, yeah, that's that's the things that I enjoyed. It certainly sounds like kelp is a lot of fun to play. So where can people find out more about the game? Well, if you're watching this... Uh, close to the time that it came out, you can check out Kelp on Kickstarter. You just got a Kickstarter right now. It's probably still live, and you can search for Kelp, and you'll find it, and you can you can read all about it there, and hopefully back it. And um, if it's in the future sometime, uh, the best place to check it out would be going to kelpgame.com, kelpgame.com, and there should be lots of information there, and a learn to play, and uh, various videos and things, and uh, you can find out. I'm sure then how to. How to get a copy. So um, yeah, Oliver, thank you so much for taking the time to ask me these questions. I've really enjoyed talking to you and uh, answering them. So thanks very much and good luck for the show. Bye. No, thank you, Carl, for coming on and giving us a bit more of an insight into kelp and the design process that it went on. It's been really interesting talking to you, so thank you very much. Links to the Kickstarter and to the website will be in the description box down below, so you don't need to go and find them. And well, thanks to all of you watching as well. And until next time, have an asymmetrical great day.